So this is a, a tree that I acquired from Bonsai Plaza. And in Japan, there was a guy who uh, made these trees out of cutting. So, and he grown them in, in colanders. So what he done is every year he, may, would, he would make some more deadwood details. And that's why how he create these beautiful twists and curly uh, live veins on, 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 on the tree. And that's something very beautiful. So I got it with this trunk but the branches were all up. And I had a workshop with Otsumi Terukawa, um, and uh, we did the first styling. Afterwards, uh, Manuel Germani came into my garden and we styled this tree with Manuel. And now this tree is uh, under my care for uh, three more years. Uh, and now I'm developing it or uh, maintaining it for uh, an exhibition in January and in February if the tree uh, is uh, selected, of course. <laughs> oh, I think so. Uh, what kind of uh, juniper is it? Uh, this is a juniper chinensis Itogawa. It has very small and very fine foliage, and that's quite interesting, and also more beautiful, and, and it also uh, increases the value of the tree when you work on an Itogawa juniper. So, How did you choose the pot? Uh, the pot is Yamaki, is uh, Tokonami, and um, this pot was actually first for another tree, but I thought it suited well with the, the tree. When I uh, think about a pot, I have, a, I have certain rules that I apply of, like a round pot or a, a pot that fits in a, in a circle. You can use for uh, Kangai styles or Bunjing styles. When you use uh, or have a pot that fits in a, in a rectangle, so a rectangle or a, a oval or stuff like that, that, that are pots that you can use for different other styles. So, and then it also depends how the crown of your tree is and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit uh, about the Scotch pine? Yes, of course. This is a Scotch pine or Pinus sylvestris that I collected myself in the south of France. Um, it was near uh, a road and near a path where you could hike. And it was a very beautiful tree with here a very long piece and here this beautiful trunk with a lot of movement. But this part was going this way. So. When I collected it, I left it in the garden for around uh, three years, so that the growth was quite quite well. And then I started to work on it. And what I first did was I started to uh, remove the clay soil from the mountain and get it used to akadama and, and pumice, because that's a product that I like to use because of the, all the particles. Um, and then, when it was repotted, I left it in this in another pot for two years, and then I started to split this open and start to bend it. So then in February, the first time I bend it, and then in November again. And then it was styled with Bjorn Bjorholm. So he made the first styling. So two years after that, we did the styling with Manuel Germani to create it into this shape and to have it more compact, because here was a branch as well that we styled with Bjorn to have, and it was a little bit bigger like this. Uh, so we removed that branch and then this one, this branch, we compacted a little bit more so you can see this movement around here. And it has a beautiful movement that, um, that is very beautiful with the trunk line. So that's very important when you style a tree. Uh, so you can compact a little bit more and then you can face your, make your foliage clouds. So this had now tree stylings and the branches are starting to come into position but still they need a little bit of time and also the tree needs a little bit more ramification so next year we can uh, we can try to apply mikiri so we can create more back buds so the tree will get more ramification as well also is repotted in this hikishua pot uh, because this is an old japanese pot but for me the color is a little bit uh, not into my taste with the tree. I prefer more uh, uh, a brown reddish color for this tree, so in the future it will be repotted in another pot. Hello, this is Janne Kege of Yama Bonsai Studio and today we have another episode of the Bonsai Academy. Last time we talked a little bit about Larix Decidua Yamadori and this was a tree that was still in progress. So now we have another Larix Decidua Yamadori and this tree is 
a little bit more advanced. This already had a few other stylings. This tree was collected in Austria by uh, Ruth Lagas. Then a student of mine, uh, Derek, bought this tree. He first styled it with another professional in, in Belgium. We did a great job, but in my opinion, the tree suited something else for a design. So first, the front of this tree was here. As you can see, the tree is quite nice and has nice movement, but there are, in my opinion, a few problems why I wouldn't use this front. As you can see, you have inverse taper. And taper is very important, so you have to have a very beautiful conicity and movement into the trunk. And as you can see here, the space here is like this, and here it is a little bit bigger. So that's something that I don't like. I can understand why he chose this feature, because here you have some deadwood and you have this, these big veins, what makes it uh, kind of special. But it only will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And you have some nice movement. But in my opinion, also if you can see here, the tree leans to the back as well. So what we have done is we changed the position around in this direction more or less, because here we have a beautiful base. We have a very beautiful movement. We have this beautiful chari and it's hollow. Uh, Larx naturally uh, hollows out from, from the inside, so that's important as well. And our branches are also quite nice or in a nice position as well. The tree was a little bit higher, so we compacted a little bit. So with this branch, we made a new apex and created more movement as well. Because this tree is in a different goal, we have to do different techniques to develop this tree into the next level. And this tree is already becoming quite nice. So what I would suggest is the front is more or less around here. Yes, I will wire this branch with this branch. And then I will show you branch per branch what I'm going to cut, how I'm, how I'm going to cut, and why. I will explain you why, because it's very important. Because one day this will grow out, and if we cut it back, we want to have the same foliage cloud shape again, and that's very important with this tree. So this is a Aspel Martin from my own collection. Uh, the tree when I bought it was quite messy. Uh, all the branches were running through each other. So the first thing what we did was uh, making a branch selection. So we cut and we also only used the alternating branches. And then we wired the branches out to make a, like a hand structure, yes. And then in future, when we had to cut the tree back, the, the tips that were growing up, we shortened until one or two internoids to create a little bit more volume into the tree. So this is how the tree looks now. Unfortunately, um, I rented this tree out uh, to a restaurant a while ago and they didn't properly wire it. So unfortunately, I got some damage around here at the Nibari. But thank God uh, the callus healed a little bit over. So in future we will, like in August and September is a good month to do it. We will uh, cut the callus a little bit. So we will try to uh, close these wounds again. So that's unfortunate, but that's also bonsai and that happens in life as well. <laughs> And for me also important, the pot. Yes, the pot is a very old uh, Yamafusa Japanese tokonami pot. Um, also, we chose for a darker color because it gives a, a beautiful contrast with the tree because the bark is more grayish, light, lighter, and this gives a beautiful contrast and it has also a beautiful patina. Okay, now we have a Taxus Cuspidata, yes. a Japanese uh, tree. Can you tell us a little yeah. bit? Um, I have bought this tree from Bonsai Plaza, from Martin. He acquired this one in Japan. It was first in a round non-bond pot. And the first styling I did with Taiga Uri Shibata. Um, and then the second styling I did with Manuel Germade from Spain. And now the tree is starting to get ready for an exhibition. So I'm going to remove the wire. I already did with this one. And I try to apply uh, as as less wire as possible to create a beautiful shape like this and like this and like this so that you have a lot of volume and then I try to also uh, 
pluck old needles away so a lot of air can come into the tree was also very important so now i still need to <coughs> do the rest and clean the dead wood and then the tree is also ready for an exhibition for january and february so if the tree gets selected and i also need to clean <laughs> need to clean the, the the weeds of course so uh, next year the tree also gets repotted because the soil is starting to uh, de decompose a little bit so we can create like a nice Airy makes a uh, good substrate for, for, for the tree. You have also Olea in your collection. How do you care in our climatic year? Okay, so from my opinion, uh, Olea sylvestris is a very easy species. Only in the winter you have to be a little bit careful with. Uh, with frost and with snow because they don't really like that. Uh, this tree I acquired two years ago and I started two years ago with working on it. And these were tiny small branches. So what I first did was I wired and set the bones of these small uh, branches and I repotted it in this pot into a very nice mix of 50% of, uh, Akadama and 50% Palmas. Um, then when the first branches were styled, I let them grow to get a certain thickness, but they still need to get bigger as well. And then what I did was the, made the branches also alternating so that you can create a very beautiful foliage cloud, yes? And then uh, we remove all the leaves and all the growth that's coming from, from beneath. And the growth that grows on top, we cut into one or two internodes to create volume as well. And that's how you create an quite short time, very beautiful foliage cloud. But you also need to take care of the growth and look at the growth because olive grows up and down with the leaves and sideways. So I always cut them back where they grow sideways so they split into two again and that's very important. So you see here that there's still some lag of taper so we have let this branch grow out and I've cut it because it couldn't fit in the, into the greenhouse anymore because the branch was almost as tall as me. So, so I have cut it back to this branch, so this one next year can grow out again. So, and as you can see, most of the branches are already without wire. Here is a little guy wire on here to set these branches into position. And next year when it starts to grow, we can start to cut back again and use some, uh, a little bit of detailed wire, uh, but not too much to create this tree. So I think in a couple of years, the, this will become a very nice bonsai in time. So, so this is the uh, Unipera Sabina Turifera uh, from my collection. Um, this tree I already have since the age of 15. I acquired this beautiful tree uh, at the garden of Pius Notter in Switzerland. I was attracted by this tree because of because of the nice dead wood and the twisty live veins. What's uh, a plus for 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 bonsai, of course. <coughs> P.S. Notter has his own style, so the first styling I did was a workshop over there and he has like the par a parachute kind of styling. That's what in his opinion is very natural. Um, so we started with that one. Then when I, two years later, I repotted the tree and also went with a workshop with Otsumi Terakawa. And then we styled the tree a little bit more into this design. And then after a few years, the tree was at the trophy. So it was for me my first exhibition, or no, my second exhibition, excuse me. Um, and I had it into a Chinese antique pot that I got from uh, Kobayashi. So uh, that had a lot of emotional value for me. After the trophy, the tree got some problems because it still had the old foliage uh, with a lot of flowers and some branches started to die off also because of, uh, of insects. Um, and then I put it into a bigger pot for the, for the tree's survival. And then I let it grow for two years. And then we started to graft Itogawa on it to have a more beautiful foliage on the tree. Because for, in my opinion, it's important that you make bonsai a little bit more simple because bonsai is still or, or is a lot of work. So the maintenance will be a little bit more easy because this foliage is quite uh, fine and, and, and very nice. So we have grafted it, I think, three years ago. And then we let the branches grow out. 
we created some shapes into the branches to create more character into the tree, as you can see here. And then it got the uh, first styling with Marco Invernizzi. And this year I gave it the second styling and uh, refined or defined the, the foliage cloud on, onto this tree. In future we will uh, present it into another pot, maybe the Chinese antique pot again from Shibunkyo. We will see.